Okay, hi everybody. My name is Stephen Huxford. I'm the director of the IBL program at um, the faculty, and that's one of the major channels for industry experience. I'm going to get you to do some reading first of all, because these people can sell it much better than I can. So I know there's a lot of words, but read through them because they're all heartfelt and, and um, really quite interesting. Redify is one of the major software development houses in Melbourne. So these people are all in just one particular type of um, industry experience, the IBL experience, but it speaks to how valuable the experience is. There's just one more to go after this. And something these people don't tell you is that they've already got multiple job offers for when they finish their degree for multiple corporations. Okay, so it must be confusing coming from the outside and trying to understand our degrees and everything. So I'll just briefly go over uh, that. We've got three major degrees, um, Bachelor of Information Technology, the Bachelor of Computer Science and the Bachelor of Software Engineering. If you choose your subjects when you're doing your Bachelor of Information Technology, you can earn a major, and those majors are business information system, software development, network and security, interactive media and games development. Similarly in the computer science degree there are two majors, they call them special specialties there, uh, an advanced computer studies and data science. I'll talk to you about data science in just a couple of minutes. Um, and then the Bachelor of Software Engineering does not have any specialities inside of it. Now, you'll notice that I've put that uh, business information systems and interactive media are less tech. So everything else outside of those is highly tech. You're going to code, you're going to be designing networks or doing something quite technical. Uh, but those two, not so much. And you might ask the question, why is a person who's not really interested in heavy technical stuff in the faculty in the first place? Well, I'll explain that in a minute. Just so that you understand the structure of a degree at Monash, um, or at least in our faculty, an academic year consists of two semesters. Uh, a student will typically take four units per semester, so four subjects, basically. Uh, each unit is typically worth six points, and so you do three-year degree, six semesters, 24 units, 144 points. I mention that because the, the um, industry experiences I'm going to uh, talk to you about have different number of point values to them. Okay, so what do you, wh why are there non-technical people, or sort of not highly technical people in our faculty? Well, if you're a BIS major, you're targeting things like a business analyst. It's an incredibly interesting job where you talk to the people that want the software and translate that into language that the technical people can understand ready to actually build the software. Or like any project in, uh, in the world, um, in, uh, IT projects need a manager to manage them. Um, and also there's a huge uplift in governance and regulation and compliance. And the Royal Banking Commission has made all the banks very, very worried about their processes and stuff. And so uh, you can, there are lots of positions being advertised now for people to do things like um, check that they're doing the right thing. And also you need your company to be secure and know the risk of how, uh, from cyber attack and things like that. So there's all those kind of governance issues which are not particularly technical. Um, that's very confusing for outsiders to understand Bachelor of Computer Science and Bachelor of Software Engineering. What the hell is the difference between them? 
Well, um, and they would shoot me for saying this, by the way, so uh, it's just as well there's not, probably none in the room. But basically, BCS is about working out algorithms to solve problems, whereas software engineering is about how do we build software? How, how do we gather the requirements for it? How do we write those down? How do we then move forwards into building it? And how do we deliver it and maintain it eventually? There are lots of units in common between these two degrees. And the bottom line for somebody like you guys that are just thinking about starting a career is the industry doesn't care. No company is going to say, we want a, software, a, a Bachelor of uh, Computing Science over a Bachelor of Software Engineering. They're the same deal for them, basically. So you don't have to worry about that choice. So this data science speciality in the Bachelor of Computer Science, data science is a term used to, um, it's got a huge job growth, first of all, and it's predicted to get even bigger going forwards. And it's about mining the huge data sets that are part of the information age that we live in, basically. Um, there's a sub-branch that you'll see much more commonly than data science called data analytics, and that's kind of like data science right now. It's not AI, it's not all of this fancy stuff, it's just statistical analysis and visualisation of statistical analysis of huge data sets, basically. So you see a lot more of that, and a lot of jobs advertised for that. Later, there'll be a lot of jobs in AI, et cetera. And it's not just single degrees, so double degrees are becoming increasingly more popular. Uh, the most common one with us is uh, with the um, Bachelor of Commerce, maybe a specialisation in accounting or all kinds of things that they do over there, or, or maybe a, the Bachelor of Business. Now, five years ago, I would have fallen over backwards if a computer scientist told me or a software engineer told me they wanted to do a double degree with commerce. Now, it's like a common thing. Wow. Um, I myself am not fully on board with this. I think a double degree is very hard work over four years. University is meant to be the best time of your life. You don't want to be chained to a desk for the four years, basically. And I also think that people do it because they think it gives them the maximum catchment area for, a, for a, um, a career. A lot of students have said to me that once they got into the IT placement, or for instance in IBL, that they discovered there are hundreds of possible career pathways in there and they really didn't need this extra degree at all. Not all students, but some students have said that. My message is think about it carefully before you do a double degree. If you're really keen, by all means, do it. Okay, and the other thing I wanted to point out quickly that you might not know, is our profession has changed tremendously, the profession of an information, uh, uh, an IT professional. Um, in the past, it used to work like this. You'd go see the people that wanted, to build, uh, wanted you to build some software for them. You'd talk to them for months on end and you'd get complete requirements. Then you'd go away for two years, you'd build the system meticulously, you wouldn't really get back to them very much. Finally, you'd go, here's our system, and they go, it's useless. Time's moved on since we started all of this. You know, half of it doesn't work. You've made some decisions when you were coding that we didn't want you to make or whatever. So that was the way things were done. It's a very quiet profession, people sitting in rooms on their own and coding. Nowadays, it's not like that at all. You go see the client, get a rough idea of what they want, back to the office, two-week sprint, knock something together, go and show it to them straight away. Come back, discuss what happened, the feedback, go through the cycle again and again and again, very fast sprints. Coders are in each other's faces all the time. Each coder has to have their code approved by another coder. Coders work in pairs, etc. There are stand-ups every morning where everybody says what they're going to do for the day and what happened yesterday if they didn't do it. There are um, retros where they discuss what exactly happened over the last two weeks. And, and there are showcases where they show off what they've done. It is a very noisy team environment these days, not for somebody that wants to sit in a, in a room on their own. It is a very interpersonal kind of situation these days. So that's a big change for our career. Why do you want industry experience? Because you get experience at a corporate level a real level of all of these things here. Problem solving, teamwork, communication, interpersonal skills, corporate behaviour. How does one behave in the corporate world these days? Networking and establishing a personal brand, very big now over the last couple of years. You need to put it out there that, hey, I am really good at this. I am fantastic at this platform or something like that. And then when a team's formed and they're thinking, who shall we get? Oh yeah, Steam's really good at that. Let's go get him. That's pretty much how it works in this much more dynamic situation now. Obviously, exposure to potential employers. You get to show them what you can do. They think, 
Why would I pick up a graduate from university who's got a fantastic transcript with HDs for everything, when I know this person has actually worked in industry and done well at it? They're a sure thing. This other person, who knows? They might not be the real deal. So all of those things are important. And yes, of course, we try to do these at university. We teach all the theory. We try to simulate the uh, practice, etc. But you can't do it for real. You've got to be out there to see it. The scale of software in the real world is so much bigger than the scale that we can, can manufacture at university. The complexity of it is so much greater. So for those reasons, we, we, we're very interested in our students getting industry experience. Who gets it? Well, the short answer is everybody. Everybody has a chance to do it. All undergrads and postgrads, all domestics and internationals, and all IT degrees, single or double. So everybody has the opportunity if they want to take it. What experiences are available? There are things called capstone units that I'll talk to you about in detail in just a minute. And there's one for each of the degrees, the three types of degrees. For instance, the one for the Bachelor of Information Technology is called Industry Experience. But the software, you know, the computer scientists and the software engineers have their own capstone units as well. Then there is a much deeper experience, as you'll see. Uh, that's a semester internship with scholarship. That's the IBL program. And finally, there, there's a really exciting um, type of internship called uh, MITI, the Monash Industry Team Init Initiative. I'll talk to you about that later on, if I get, if I get time. All right, so these capstone units, what's going on there? Okay, so here's your degree, either of the three degrees that I've mentioned. You're doing loads of units, years are rolling by, and you're doing them all, you know, four units per semester. And right in your final year, you will do a couple of units, coupled together as a single thing, called a capstone unit, which means this is where you get to do something practical with everything that you've learned so far. They are university-based. You do not go off campus for these at all. Um, they're worth two degree units, as I said. They uh, operate in groups, and those groups work in purpose-built studios where there's desks for four people, and a common display for everybody to work, etc. The industry part comes in because you deal with a real-world client. Somebody out there wants a piece of software, that's arranged for you, and, and you meet with that client, and they tell you what they want, and then you try to build it. Using all the modern uh, uh, life cycles that I've talked about so far, the agile life cycle of stand-ups, and normally that's the way that it's done, basically. Okay. And as I've said, it's a chance for students, capstone, it's like the capstone of a building, all the stuff that's been built up in the years before, you now get to put into action in a practical situation. Okay, so the... The other experience is called the industry-based learning experience, and that looks more like this. Here's your degree, you're doing some units, then you got away from university for a whole semester to work embedded in a company. And then you come back and finish off some units and then you're done, basically. The interesting part about this is this bit here. The IBL, um, IBL selection process. So while you're doing all those early units, there is a lot of other stuff that you need to do. See, that wasn't the case before. Right? You didn't do anything. You just went through your degree as per usual. There was no extra stuff to do. And then you finished off with your capstone unit. But now there's some extra stuff. Some pain. A lot of pain for a lot of gain. So uh, if you do this, you get a scholarship of $18,000. You're embedded in the partner company. It's worth three degree units, not two, which is interesting because the semester is four and you're away for a semester, so there's a unit missing. You have to overload for that, either before or after you go on placement. More pain, basically. You're supervised closely. We don't just leave you. We, Monash, supervise you and the, the, the industry partner supervises you with one or multiple um, supervisors, buddies and coaches and stuff. Students learn by performing graduate level real world tasks. There is no structure. They just go in and they sit down and they do whatever their team does, basically. Whatever team they've been placed in, they do some of that work. Assessment is 50% by us and 50% by industry. And again, it's a chance to put all of the you've learned so far into practice. So what's all this extra pain? 
Well, this is what it looks like. You have to do lots of stuff. Matt, I am aware of the time. Okay, I'll go finish this one. So you have to apply. Then you have to see the industry interview where they say yes or no. Are you ready for the, uh, um, uh, the placement? Any placement, not a placement in a particular company. Then your course map has to be radically redrawn to make up semester space in it. Then you have to go to another set of interviews to find out whether you're suitable for a particular partner company. Then finally you get placed. And all the while, your WAM, the measure of your academic performance, has to be a credit average. You can't let it dip below a credit average. So the IBL program at Monash is 30 years old. It's the oldest program at the university for, for industry experience. Uh, recently, we've been placing 100 students or more per semester. That's 200 a year. Employment outcomes for our place students are 90% receive uh, job offers before graduation. Uh, 70 to 80% are employed by our industry partners. Some are employed part-time immediately after their placement till the end of their degree by the company because the company liked them so much and they were doing such useful work. They say, well, nothing to do with the university. We would like to employ you part-time. So you have to apply. You have to enter the industry interview where you can be knocked out if they say that you're not ready and they're looking for these kind of things at the top here. So you have to be up, energy, curious about the world, curious about the IT profession, so you've done some research, etc. Then you have the big heavy two days where you'll sit through 40 speed interviews with all the different partners that want to see you. Uh, where they rank you, one, yes, we want this person, two, oh, well, we want, it's a good idea, bring them on, or three, we do not want them. And your WAM has to be um, at the 65 level all the time, so it's a lot of work, uh, and there are many other restrictions as well that I won't go into right now. Yes, it's a lot of pain, but the gain, as you've seen from the testimonials at the start, is huge for these students. So our partner companies are the four major um, professional services firms, um, the two main banks that are headquartered in Melbourne plus the Commonwealth Bank, uh, lots of software houses, some medium-sized consultancies, some utilities, and lots of other companies all over the place. So we, we pick them for their quality of teaching and learning and, and, and uh, the treatment of our students, etc. So just to finally finish off, the mighty thing is like an internship. It is an internship, but it's not part of a degree. It's run over summer. You are grouped with four other students from Monash University from different faculties to make an interdisciplinary team. You are given a task that is decided by the company of Monash. There is a scholarship attached to it, by the way, and you're paid. Um, And you're given a, a particularly cutting-edge problem that only a multidisciplinary group could solve. Again, it's not part of your degree, okay? It is just uh, uh, an internship over summer. So um, I will be out here if you need to ask me any questions in the foyer for a while. Thank you for listening. Ta.